Good morning guys, thank you for joining me for Walking With The Word. Um, this morning I'd like to talk about passion, zeal, enthusiasm. Uh, I don't know who you are, where you are um, as you're listening to this or what your culture is like, um, but just take a moment to reflect on the culture around you. Think about your immediate culture, your family, your household, um, and then think about your community, the people that you know around you, your friends, your broader family, um, and then think about um, the broader culture of your, of your country, the place that you live. Is passion something that's welcome? Are you welcome to be passionate about your faith, to be passionate about God? Because God welcomes passion. And let me tell you this morning, you can't be too passionate about your faith. God is looking for people of passion. I actually want to share a verse with you from Revelation. So um, <clears throat> there's some prophecies to a various churches at the start of Revelation. Um, and we can read um, that some of them were doing well um, and were succeeding in, in their spiritual walk and their faith. Um, and then these prophecies are held accountable just over certain things. And in other cases, they seem to be getting it more wrong. Um, one of the churches that seems to be having a really bad time spiritually um, is in Laodicea. And it says um, of this church, I know your works. You are neither hot nor cold. I would that you were either hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm and neither hot or cold, I will spit you out my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. Whoa, they're pretty tough words, aren't they? Um, but what we see is this church has lost its passion. It's a, it's a lukewarm church. It's not, it's not hot, it's not cold. And God said, I would spit you out of my mouth. I don't know if you've done it where you go to get yourself a drink of uh, cold water from the tap, right? Um, and um, as you, as you turn the tap on, someone's been running hot water. There's still some hot water in the pipe and that mixes in your cup and you fill your cup up with water and you presume it's cold and then it's lukewarm. Like, yeah, it's just, you just don't like it in your mouth, do you? Um, and although it's a harsh illustration, I think it's meant to capture the idea that God really wants to see passion in our lives individually and in his churches. God wants to see passionate churches. Now there's a phrase that's sometimes used in my culture which is happy clappy. It's kind of like a way of um, slightly mocking, joking about churches that are passionate but we shouldn't do that. Passionate churches are good. We want passion in our worships, passion in our prayer life, passion in the way we read the Bible and passion in the way that we talk about our faith to other people. A passionate believer won't be able to be silent because they love God so much. They love Jesus so much they won't be able to stop talking about him no matter how much people tell you oh your faith is just a personal thing keep it to yourself keep it quiet don't go telling your faith, it's just something for you. But when you get this passion, when this passion comes alive in you, when Jesus is in you, it just starts to build up and bubble up and it's bursting to get out. And someone who's so in love with Jesus and so enraptured and full of him will struggle to stay silent. I love this. What was going wrong with this church? Well, um, I want to hazard a few guesses. I don't know, I wasn't there. Um, but I think there are a few clues in the text. Firstly, we have a community. It's a group of people. And I think in communities, we can get these overriding cultures. It seems like there was a lukewarm culture here. Um, and I want to, um, this is why I got you thinking at the beginning about the culture that you're surrounded by. I want us to reflect this morning on our cultures. Um, and I want you to think about your churches, if you're part of a church, um, or your, your family and the people around you, and whether the culture you're in is something um, where you feel free to be passionate. Do you know what? If you don't, don't worry about it. Just let that passion come alive in you anyway, and God will sort the rest out. Just trust him. It may be uncomfortable. It may cause tension. You may even end up with broken relationships. But let me tell you, being passionate about Jesus, there's nothing that can replace it. He loves us so much. He gave everything for us. He's passionate about us. And when we start to reciprocate that passion, and when we have that passionate relationship with him, so much can happen, guys. So much can change. There's so much power that we can access. Just let yourself be passionate for him. 
Another clue um, for what was going wrong is we read this, it was a rich church. Um, in Revelation it says, you, you say that I'm prosperous, I'm rich. There's a sense of them proclaiming their richness. And I think the problem is when they um, have got rich, they don't realise their need for Christ. They don't realise um, that actually they're naked and pitiable and poor. That's the way it puts it in Revelation. Again, harsh words, but um, I think we can get uh, our hearts and minds so invested in our riches and wealth and affluence, it can distract us from passion. And that can even happen if you're not rich, if you're not affluent. You can be on such a mission to get rich and to get affluent and to make money that your heart and mind are somewhere else. Jesus puts it this way, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. So where is your treasure? Is your treasure in amassing riches? Is it in getting really wealthy and affluent? Because if it is, then your heart will be there. If your heart's there, trust me, your mind and the rest of your body will follow too. We want our hearts and our treasures to be centred in the kingdom of heaven in Christ. Um, so I want to share um, a verse which talks about um, passion um, in a different way. And this verse um, that talks about passion is um, where Jesus is summarising the law and he says the law is this love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your mind and with all your strength if it doesn't capture passion I don't know what does it's amazing and it's holistic heart mind and strength those three things so let's just reflect on those things um, firstly um, our heart is kind of the deepest part of our being. It's a part of us that makes makes decisions and reflects. It's to me when I when I hear the Bible talking about heart, what I understand it to mean is this kind of inner, deeper self, the, the part of you that connects with God, your your spirit, the deepest deepest part of your being. If you love God with all your heart, that's going to look passionate, guys. If the deepest part of your being, the deepest part of your soul, is just sold out to loving God fully and wholly that is going to be a passionate believer. That's going to be a passionate worshiper. That's going to be someone who's not afraid to talk about Jesus, who's not afraid to dance in worship, someone who's not afraid to proclaim him, worshiping God with all our hearts, but it also calls us to worship God with all our minds. So what does that look like? And I think this is part of passion too. Um, I absolutely love um, a ministry called Reasonable Faith. There's a guy there, he's a philosopher, he's called William Lane Craig, American guy, um, and he to me is the epitome of someone who just loves God with his mind so beautifully. He he studies the word so faithfully, he has such a deep integrity in the way he um, explores and explains, and then, you know what, he just shares his stuff so freely. It's just such a sweet, humble ministry. He, he basically, at the same time as being a sweet, humble ministry, it's powerful as well. Like the amount of work that he's published, the areas that he investigates, um, when he gets into debates, his, his just He's, he's fearsome, he's so gentle but so fearsome and he'll debate some of the leading atheistic thinkers in the world like um, Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, Lawrence Krauss and he'll, he'll, he'll basically debate these people, people whether they're, they're physicists, ethicists, whether they are biologists. Um, if, if they're atheists and they disagree with God, he'll happily debate with them. And he does it in this beautiful, gentle way where he kind of deconstructs all their arguments and, and kind of glorifies Christ. He brings all, all thoughts and all arguments in subjection to Christ. And this is a man who's learned to love God with his mind. So we're talking about loving God with our hearts. And I know um, he's got a deep spiritual relationship with God too in his heart, but it's a way he, he trains his mind and he studies and he, he glorifies God through his thought life and his mind and his studies. Um, and um, I just find this an exciting area. Learning about God's the most exciting thing that you can learn about um, because it tells us so much about life. It tells us so much about the world. If the world was made by God and if we were made by God, surely that's exciting. Surely we'd want to get to know that. Surely that's going to give us some amazing information about the world and ourselves that we wouldn't otherwise have access to. So loving God with our minds about taking curiosity and interest and learning and submitting our thought life to him. Um, and I think that's the other side of it. There's a kind of devotional, pastoral process of loving God with our minds. It's about um, having a, a kind of thought life that centers on Christ, not letting our thoughts get carried away with us, whether that's getting drawn into fantasies or into unhealthy thought patterns or worry, um, but letting Christ just be ruler of our minds. So we love God with all our hearts, with all our minds, 
and with all our strength. So the strength to me refers to the body. This is a holistic love, guys. Your heart, your mind, and your strength. That's everything you have. To me, this is a definition of passion. It's loving God first and foremost with everything we have, a complete and whole love with all of our being. Um, so how do we love God with our body? Well, um, this is an interesting idea so we don't normally think about this, but I think sometimes it can be just the way we invest our time, where we go, um, perhaps even the conversations we have, what we're willing to do physically. It may even be that there's just some um, serving and volunteering that you're feeling called to, that you know will glorify God, that will show love to people, um, whether that's going and helping in a food bank, um, whether that's going and just cleaning up a local park. Um, there's so many ways you can just serve and, and kind of get on with things, using your hands, using your strength, using your skills to glorify God and serve him. And, and remember, this is holistic love, guys, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And I think the tendency um, for Christians, I know this is true of myself, is just to focus on one thing. So you can get a great spiritual life and you can have a great devotional life where you spend time worshipping um, but then um, you, don't worry, you don't think about how you can submit your mind to Christ. You don't think about how you can love Christ with your, with your mind. Um, or, you know, you might have a, a, a great understanding of God and be really invested in, in your mind. And whether that's the intellectual side of Christianity or doing Bible studies, you might have your mind, you might have all these ideas sorted but you don't spend time in the holy spirit you don't spend time in that intimate worship that place of surrender to god getting close to him and passionate in your heart that way um and then i think it's very easy to forget to love god with our with our strength with with our time with our energy with our bodies to find opportunities to serve but we're called to a holistic love to a holistic passion so i'd love to pray now um, and um, i want to pray that god's going to stir up a passion and a fire um, in anyone and everyone who's joined me this morning to um, to listen to this so um, if you want to join with me in that prayer please do and um, father i just pray that you would ignite a passion in your church that wouldn't be quenched father may we not be quenched by um, culture may we not be quenched by riches and distractions um, may your passion affect every part of our being our hearts our minds our bodies our strength help us to be unashamed in our passion help us to profess you and share you and to love you and to talk talk about you and I pray that you would just um, occupy every aspect of our lives every aspect of our minds help us to love you more fully with our minds to love you more deeply with our hearts and to love you more passionately with our strength and our bodies in Jesus name amen thank you for joining me this morning guys I'll be sharing these every morning so I will see you tomorrow morning take care and God bless you for now bye bye